I'll say this this morning. Um, I don't know if you've been able to get out and about for your daily exercise. Um, I've been uh, doing the same walk every day. And something this week reminded me of my childhood. And I don't know if any of you kids ever used to make dens, but um, I used to love making dens in the garden. Um, and this week I was on, a, on my walk and I decided to sit down on a bench and just briefly take in my surroundings. And I've always loved cow parsley. I know some people think it's a bit of a weed, but it just at the moment it's just fantastic in the hedgerows. It's so frothy and beautiful. And I've always thought it was so pretty. Um, but when I sat down on the be bench, I noticed it was like um, over me, like a sort of arch like that. And looking at it from the perspective of the bench was even better because I could see behind it and the sun was shining through and it was even more magical and wonderful looking at it from that perspective. And it reminded me of the psalm that is this week's psalm. It's Psalm 31 and it says, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. And you know, when we come to the God of truth, and when we are hidden with Christ, when we give our hearts to him, we, we are in a place of refuge, and we can see life in a more wonderful and beautiful way than we ever have before. Um, so we're going to sing two songs uh, this morning. Uh, the first one is, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made. Shall we sing together?
one of us when we come to you we can be secure in that knowledge in a time when everything seems a little bit uncertain and we don't know from day to day what news there'll be we thank you that we can trust you and know that our lives are in your hands we thank you that you are our king of kings and we want to come to you this morning and bring you the praise that you deserve and i thank you lord that we can be called children of god and come from that place of security and refuge to our Father God this morning. Shall we sing together um, King of Kings Majesty?
thank you this morning that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're reigning over all. And I thank you that you have given us your word. And I pray that as we read it now and as we hear John speak from it, that you would speak to our hearts by your spirit. That we might realise more of your glory and your goodness. And more of your great love to us. And so that we might grow to be more like you. In Jesus' name. Peter chapter 2 verses 2 to 10. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow in salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become to capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were dis destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The second reading is from John chapter 14 verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Isn't it wonderful to hear the scriptures read? by older people and by younger people too. The Bible is a book for everybody and children especially treasure the very first Bible that they ever, ever read. The psalmist says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And that's the Lord, isn't it? 
And the Bible keeps us from sin because it shows us how to re-lead a righteous life, a life following the right paths of God. It guides us, it rebukes us, it challenges us, it gives us promises in our hearts. It's like a signpost for our spiritual life that carries us along as we seek to live for Jesus. I'd like to refer today to Peter and John. Each of them have something to add to our thoughts today. And the first thing I'd like to say is Peter's reference to the cornerstone. Obviously he's thinking initially of the temple. The temple was a magnificent place at the time of Jesus. It was built by Herod the Great and no expense was spared. If you can see this picture of it, it's an artist's impression of the grandeur of the temple. And the Jewish people had to make three pilgrimages to Jerusalem for every part of Israel. For Jesus in Nazareth, it would have taken him and his family uh, is 70 miles. So it would have taken a good while to get there. And the lovely thing is that the people gathered in Jerusalem to worship God at the temple. The priests were there to accept people's offerings and sacrifices. They were there to lead in praise and intercession. They were there in a jubilant time of glory. And they were there to remember the good things that God has done. There were three particular times when Jewish people had to go to Jerusalem. So all of the Jewish community would have seen the temple in its majesty and its glory. And Jesus himself, of course, was taken to the temple when he was just a little baby. Mary and Joseph couldn't afford a lamb and they took perhaps two doves or two pigeons, which the law allowed for people who were poor. And of course, Christ again was found in this magnificent temple when he was 12 years of age. When his, mother, when his mother, Mary and Joseph, were nearly pulling the hair out, wondering where he'd gone. Of course, they'd left Jerusalem and they thought Jesus was with them. They travelled down in a crowd and they were leaving in a crowd. And in the crowd was relatives and friends. And of course, they thought that Jesus was with them. When they stopped, of course, to rest before they travelled on, they were looking around and they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. They went back to Jerusalem and it took them three days because the city was so overcrowded to find where Jesus was. He was at the temple, perhaps the last place they thought he would be. And they rebuked Jesus and Jesus said, Do you not know that I am about my father's business? In that statement, he was recognising that Joseph wasn't his father but God in glory was. Later on in his ministry, Jesus would say, he who has seen me has seen the Father, the Son of God, isn't he? All through the Gospels, we read about Jesus going up to the temple to worship. What a magnificent place it was. And of course, Peter speaks of stones, doesn't he? And we're going to think about that now. He says, and it's a quote from Isaiah 28, verse 16. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. Well, I'd like us to have a look beneath the temple. You've seen the picture of the magnificence of it. So let's go down in the temple tunnels just to see what the foundations were like. You can see on this picture how long and wide the foundation stones are. You can see in this picture, it's they're 41 feet long and 11.5 uh, inches high. Absolutely massive. They are so uh, not machined, because they didn't have machines in those days, but they were so cut so smooth, the edges were fluted and they fitted so close together, you could get, you couldn't get, a credit card or a bank card in between the stones. 
Isn't it amazing the technology that the Masons had in those days? And not only that, it was the ability to be able to move these stones and place them on top of another. This next picture gives you an idea as to exactly how big the stones are. You can see a little man at the end of the tunnel, but he's not a little man. He's a full grown man. And here in this other picture, where the foundation stones uh, come above the earth, you can see the size of it. And the man isn't a little man. You can compare him with the steps, can't you? I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone. It's the stone, says Peter, that the builders rejected wasn't good enough to go to the temple. It's become the cornerstone. And of course, Jesus was rejected, wasn't he? He was the son of God and he revealed himself as the son of God to the people in Jerusalem and elsewhere. He was seen, me as I've mentioned, as seen the father. He was rejected by his own people for the statements that is made. I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. It was a stone that caused them to stumble and a rock that made them fall. Isaiah eight fourteen. So the Lord Jesus Christ, the living stone, speaks about a living church. Jesus is the cornerstone of his church. And what a wonderful building it is when people come to faith in Christ and become part of the bricks and mortar of the building of God's church. We are his church. He is truly the cornerstone of our lives. And when we find Christ, we are a living body we're not a church that is solid like that. We're a church that is a body of people who love and serve Christ together. Jesus says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. We're reading through James at the moment, and that's a book about faith and works. It's not good enough just to have faith in Jesus. You've got to put your life into action. The body of Christ is a living, living, living body. And that body is to be seen right throughout the world, bringing the hope of Jesus to hearts who are sad and troubled and don't know him. In fact, in the upper room, Jesus tells his disciples not to be troubled. He knew what was going to happen when he broke the bread and served the wine. He was speaking as to what was going to happen to his body, broken on the cross as he bore our sins. Yes, they were troubled, weren't they? Do not let your hearts be troubled, says Jesus. You believe in God, believes also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And of course, we're coming back to the buildings again, aren't we? What are those many rooms? We used to have a bit of fun years ago when we were young. We used to say, yes, God has in heaven many rooms, a room for the Baptist, a room for the Methodist, a room for the Church of Wales, a room, a room for the Anglican Church, a room for the Pentecostals. Well, we couldn't find enough words to describe over hundreds of denominations these days and all the rooms that we've been. But in actual fact, it doesn't really mean that. I have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house are many rooms. And scholars would suggest that when a Christian goes to be with the Lord, they go into one of those rooms. It's like an inn, a dwelling place or a hotel. You know, you don't stay in a hotel for a long time, do you? You're there just for a period of time. Jesus promises that one day there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Romans reminds us in chapter 8 
that the world is groaning to its bondage to decay and waiting for that day when it will be released. Now in our society at the moment we are fighting against COVID-19, aren't we? Everybody's pulling together to fight this virus. We live in a troubled, fallen and sinful world. And Christians are to live, in a sense, above it. We live for Christ. We have a hope that goes beyond death and into glorious resurrection like the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful promise he has for his people. And he says to his disciples, don't be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I wonder if you're ready to go to that place. Is Jesus your cornerstone in life? Those big stones in the temple, the ones you can't see underground, never moved, and even some that you could see. Jesus is a solid stone for us, isn't he? He is the cornerstone of his living body here in earth. His foundation is the best foundation of all. Jesus reminds us not to build our house down on the sand, but to build them on the rock. The sand will wash away our building, but the rock will stand firm. It has a strong cornerstone. Who is your cornerstone today? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you can be the cornerstone of our lives. We are reminded of your words recorded by the Apostle Peter, speaking of the Lord Jesus. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. We remember our nation at this present time, the memories of VE Day are very poignant. Celebration on the one hand and the two minute silence to remember those who sacrificed their lives for our freedom. In scripture, we remember the greatest victory, Christ himself, the Son of God, who died for our sins for all the world. It brought victory for everyone who turns to him in true repentance and faith. May he be the cornerstone of our lives, of our government and our nation. We're reminded in Proverbs 14 verse 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to many people. Let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's sing together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest
and he shall come with trumpet sounds. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Hold less to stand before the throne, Christ alone. He's the cornerstone where we Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.